That's how I'm feeling today. That's how I'm feeling. Okay, 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 okay. Feeling real good. Feeling real good. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, if you're new, welcome. Glad you're here. This is Smart with Smart Money Capital. Let's get straight into it. Super, super profitable week last week. I hope all of you were as well. Um, when did we record last? We recorded last on Sunday. Sunday was the 11th. So we're going to do what we usually do. We're going to show where the last re recording was. Here's the 11th. Boom. All right. Okay. So now this is what we discussed on Sunday. We discussed on Sunday that we were looking to test 3506. And then we were looking to see if it could break 3506. And if it was going to break 3506, that we could potentially see the rest of the swing high to 3560. Point nine. We got pretty close. We got super close. The high was 35.50. Okay, a few things did happen. Apple, like, pretty much had a trash freaking thing today, event today. It was, it was so overhyped, so overhyped. Uh, Apple was a large portion of the S&P, so Apple selling off causes uh, the S&P to sell off. Nancy Pelosi saying that she doesn't want to agree to Trump's stimulus plan. So that's another reason to sell off. Also, another reason to sell off. Let's say there is no news. Um, Hello? You ran for one? No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? If we did a TD sequential, if you don't know what it is, look it up. On number nine is usually a pivot. Okay, on uh, number nine is usually a pivot. So that's a nine count. That's definitely a nine count right there. Uh, we're going to see now, you really need to see 3506 hold, right? As you can see, it is holding for now. But uh, you, you need to see this hold. You really don't want to see it go under. You do not want to see this go under. And if it does go under, then I guess 3473 still keeps you bullish uh, below 3473. This is a failed uh, breakout for higher highs, okay? That would make a lower high. That would be high number one here, then the lower high here, okay? And then you'd probably get your next lower high in this range if that was what's going to occur. Let me show you um, if you're doing options and calls. Let's bring up the SPY. It's super, super clean, right? This came perfectly. So let's just show you uh, the, the 11th. So we spoke over the weekend so here boom this was the last candle we seen for spy i said if you break 348.30 you have potential of testing 354.44 for, for for the swing right for potential res there before you continue to swing high breaking out to all-time highs right what did we hit we hit 354.02 i'm sorry i was off by f uh, 42 cents excuse me all right so super important uh, I understand if there's profit taking. I also understand if we do some consolidating in here. I understand if we just do a little bit of this in here. Okay. I definitely understand that. Also, the election is two weeks away. <coughs> so now that can make traders hesitant to put risk on. And it might be time for traders to put take risk off. Okay. They clearly made their profit for the month. They clearly made their profit for the book for the month. So there really wouldn't be nothing wrong with taking a risk off here. Uh, if if we do stay in the zone, it's going to become pure chop. And if you're trying to day trade that, you can. If you're trying to swing trade that, uh, I don't really recommend. Only reason why I say I don't really recommend you to swing trade it is because if you're taking options and stuff like that, you're just going to get eaten up by decay. And your premium is just going to get deleted on you. You're, you're going to have no premium. So I, I am going to open up with Apple. I am definitely going to open up with Apple. Let's start with Apple. Okay. Looking cool, right? So this was the last candle before uh, our, uh, yeah, while our video was made on Sunday. 
I said you needed to look to see a test of 119.90. If you broke 119.90, we were probably going to swing high, right? The swing high was going to be around 131.97, but I also mentioned that there's probably going to be a local res at 125.88. Sure as shit, it never closed the candle above it, right? The high was 127.32, so off by two bucks, cool. But I did give you the fair warning, all right? So also, obviously... We, I also said that it could be a sell the news play. I said today, the 13th, uh, Apple is going to have an event revealing its new iPhone, which, I mean, looked like an iPhone 5, but that's besides the point. Uh, so I guess it was a sell the news event. Now you got to see, does 119.90 hold? Do you consolidate in this range here? Because you really want to see it consolidate or just straight up go up. You don't want to see it come back down here. You don't want to see it come back down here. I mean, it wouldn't be the worst thing to come back down here, but it kind of cancels out the swing high that I was suggesting that was going to happen. Okay? If this is what could happen, the candle comes into the base, into this demand right in this zone right here. Okay? Bounces in here off the 116s to 114 zone and then takes its leg up. That's that is a possibility. That is a possibility. For me, my trade is done with Apple. I traded Apple. I made my percentage on it. Finished. I am no longer in Apple. I will let it consolidate. I will let it, you know, I want to watch price action now. Now I need to watch price action, all right? That's super important. Another one that we discussed, workhorse. What did I say, right? Uh, same thing. Here is the ninth, okay? This candle popped. I said I wanted to see how it reacted to 2877, and if it broke over 2877 with momentum, which to be honest it did, but it didn't. It was very, it was super volatile. It was up, down, up, down, up, down, and the candle closed below 2877. So what does that mean for me? Okay, it's not time yet. It's not time yet. Now we still need to see this zone again. Still need to see this zone again. We're back in this range. Are we going to make a lower low? Are we going to get a body that sits in the range between 2298 and 2066? Or are we going to just keep getting these wicks? If we do get these wicks again and we see an uptrend occur, then I think I should enter. Then I strongly believe I should enter. But for now, I don't know. I mean, this is bad right here. People got crushed right here. People are bag holding this, right? So I want to see what happens here. I want to see if we make a lower low because if we make the lower low, then I really am interested in the 2066 to 1650 area, right? That I will buy the whole range. That's me personally. You could do whatever the hell you want to do. I'm just telling you this is what I'm waiting for or I'm waiting for this to confirm as our support, as our support, and if it does, I'll probably it would probably be by depending on what the candles look like. Uh, today's Tuesday, probably by Thursday, Friday, I'll be able to determine if I want an entry or not, right? So that's how that's, that's how that's going to go. Let me just show you my baby, all right? Microsoft. Thank you. Gorgeous, right? Told you I got long in here. I told you this looked like demand. I told you they, I, I felt such a strong, strong feeling that, you know, the, the bulls are loading up. They're loading up. They're loading up. Sure as shit, they let it go. Swinging high. Uh, I told you 225.67 was potential res before finishing to test the all-time highs. We so far have reached 225.21, okay? Wasn't that far off, right? Remember what I said. Do not be a perfectionist. Have patience. Let things play out. So this is what it is. Uh, I have no signal I have no signal for me to close the position, right? No signal. Now, one thing, though, I'm up over 300% on my options. So what do you think I did? I'm not being greedy. I secured some of my profit. I closed some calls. Why did I close some calls? Because those calls paid for everything. I am completely in Microsoft for free right now, okay? So this shit could just tank, and I don't care. 
I don't care. It was a free ride, and if it pulls back, I already have trailing stops. I have trailing stops, so if it pulls back, I'm still going to be in profit by maybe 200%, 250%, and 150%. That's where my trailing stops are, and the higher it goes, the higher my trailing stop goes, and the higher I stay in profit, no matter what, if it pulls back, right? So that's super important. Uh, I'm not looking for this to pull back, right? My furthest pullback w would be to the to the when did where did this close? To where did this close? Two twenty one fifty six. That would be like my furthest pullback with a little slippage. Little slippage is possible. Besides that, I'm looking for this to just blow through now. I'm looking to blast through two twenty five sixty seven, and I'm looking to come directly to two thirty one forty four, which is right here. Directly to 231.44, and then I don't mind if we get like a day or two of testing here, and then go up to the 240s, and then maybe by December, January, 260s. It could happen before that. You know how this market is. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. Let me show you on a three week, um, so I can show you what I'm talking about. So here, when does this end? This ends October 26. So by October 26, the highest I believe it could go. Is like 250 something, 253, 254, right? But towards December and stuff like that, where where is December? Towards December, you're looking at 260s is potentially the highest it can go, right? If you want to see something, you can chart anything, okay? This is a trend. This is a trend. It's all a trend. And if you notice, the second it came back towards the trend, what happened? <laughs> Sold off, right? So super important, loving my Microsoft. I am still in. Am I telling you to chase this? Absolutely not. We're at the top of the range, okay? So understand, when I told you about this a week and a half ago, if you were interested, fine. If you've seen the break and you were interested, fine. But now we're getting into the top end of the range where there could be potential shorts or potential profit taking. So I don't recommend that. I mean, the only other way I could see this is if you buy a pullback maybe. OK, I don't really like doing that. I, I played the swing. That's what I do. I play the swing. I don't play for the little nitpicks. I'm not I'm not here to nickel and dime. I'm here for that. All right. The whole move, the meat of the move. I'm not here for the up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. I don't want to do none of that. I want no business in that. All right. I want my premium to pay me instantly. Will it take a little bit sometimes. You know, this took me four days. Sure, but I knew where I was, and I knew I had a great risk-to-reward ratio, so I was willing to do that. Your risk-to-reward ratio, look at this. Here is your risk from from where we are here all the way back to 213, and your reward is just $5. Do you understand? Come on now. Put, get it together. Don't chase. Don't FOMO. There's a thousand different things to play. There's a thousand different things to play. Now, I told you I wanted to get into QQQ. I actually didn't get into QQQ when I mentioned because this is what I was looking for, the break the break of the 285.93. What I did was I did basically what QQQ is, and I went long on Apple and took the swing up on Apple and sold off at the end of the day on Monday. Had two more calls that I closed that open today, and I'm freaking super happy I did that because, you know, you've seen what happened to Apple. All right? Let me show you Etsy. Etsy gave us great money. We closed out on Etsy on Monday. Uh, Etsy's still pumping. I'm not chasing. Let it do what it's got to do at this point. I, I need it to cool off. It needs to cool off now. Now it's got to chill out. Now I go look at other things. Right? Uh, full disclosure, I sold some Square uh, yesterday, I believe. Yes. Yesterday I sold some Square at 190 where we're at now. I sold it the day prior. Uh, cause I I I think there's a 200 psych, right? I think there's a 200 psych, and this is just on a full run, okay? It's on a full run, and I think uh, investors are gonna start diversing their money into things that still have runs left in them, such as how Microsoft did, right? This has done its swing highs. This has done the meets of the move. So I take my money out and I put them into other things now, okay? I'm still definitely a long square, definitely. Calls, I'm not in no more, and I did sell some shares, mainly because I want to buy a brand new PC. And why not buy a brand new PC with free money? I mean, fuck it. I'm going to buy a really nice one, too. Thank you, Square. Thank you, Jack Dorsey.
Appreciate you, sir. Let's get into Neo. Cool? Still in the same range. I, I got nothing to say to you. All right? I have nothing to say to you. Uh, this could be uh, good for a long-term trade for a swing high. Or w this could just completely tank. I don't know yet. I don't know yet, so there's nothing for me to do here. Same thing for Nikola, right? This could be a really good zone for you to be going long for the swing high to go test 39.18. Or at least go test the gap at 33.38. But I'm not... I'm not involved in this yet. I have other places to make money, such as, such as, net. Yeah, you see those candles. This is what I'm talking about, where I have other places to allocate my money that are going to bring me a greater return in a shorter period of time than these other things that I might just be sitting there losing my premium on. Let me show you. I, I mean, I've been showing you this since the fucking the mid-30s to 40 to 43, right? Uh, the ninth, the ninth, this is the final candle, okay? I showed you, I told you, we broke all-time high, and that we're on a full-blown run, and I don't think we're stopping. That is what I said to you, correct? Well, guess what? We're at 60 now. We're at 60 now, all right? So that's from 46 to 60. Yeah, if you had calls, holy shit. If you have shares, good shit, too. You're doing good. You're doing great. That's really solid. Something I want to show you that's a little bit more on the slow side, okay, is Michaels. If anybody knows what Michaels is, it's like a little art type store. Uh, if you haven't noticed, a lot of people still at home, and a lot of mothers, a lot of women, just a lot of people in general, like to sell stuff on Etsy and stuff like that. And guess where they get their materials from? Michaels, right? So pay attention for this. We came into we came into the base right here. And we are curling up now. We are curling up. So I am looking for it to go test 1336. I do not recommend calls on Michaels only because it's such a slow stock. If this is something you would like to invest in, by all means, it seems like a good idea, right? But be patient with it. See what you can do. If you want to allocate your money somewhere else and you don't have that type of capital just park here, then I understand you should skip over this then. You should definitely skip over this. Let's get into Zillow. Now, Zillow. What did I tell you? Right? I said that I was looking for the 101s to, uh, no. Originally, it was, I needed to see here. So here's the ninth. Where's the ninth? Boom. So at that point, I did not see these two candles yet. At that point, I told you I need to see how Zillow reacts to 102.94 and 101.57, right? I said at that point, I need to see if that holds as a support because I haven't seen Zillow show me a proof of support yet. Cool? Well, it didn't show me proof of support there, actually. And what it's showing me is proof of res now between the 102.94 and the 101.57. So now what we're hovering over is the 99.21, uh, right? Right here, 99.21. Now I need to see, is that going to be support? Or are we going to swing to the 96s, right? Are we going to swing to the 96.35 area as support? Once I see us starting to bottom out and start to show me signal of support, then I am going to be interested in going long again. Going long how? Well, I own Zillow since $30 share-wise. So I don't know if I want to add to the position. If I do add to the position, it's literally free. So maybe I will add to the share side. But what I also want, because I know Zillow has a nice chunk of money in it right now, and it gets a whole lot of volume in it, I might be also taking calls into Zillow. But remember what I said, I'm super cautious right now because fundamentally the stock market is in a certain place where you say one little word, pop, down it goes, right? That could be Nancy, that could be Trump, that could be freaking anybody at this point, and Things could go crazy. So I'm super, super cautious. I want to at least see the election pass before I start, like, full sending my investment type of money in. Right now, I'm still I'm swing trading. I am not exactly investing right now. I am swing trading. Uh, my swing trades could be from two days or an overnight swing or a week, two weeks, three weeks. Depends on how far out. I'm looking to go, but it's always a planned trade. 
I don't just go in something at, like I'm at the fucking horse race and it's like, go Zillow, go, go Zillow, go. And then five minutes later, oh, Zillow's fucking me. Well, Zillow's not going to fuck me and I'm not going to be screaming, go Zillow, go, because I have where I want it to go. And I have where if it goes a little sour on me, I'm out, which means it didn't fuck me. I took the loss that I planned on losing. You understand? So that is definitely important. Um, there was something else I did want to show you before. I ah, there we go, my baby. My baby. All right, so check this out, right? This is where we were on the 9th. So candle closed. It closed in support. It closed in a really nice support range. I said I need to see how this goes. I, I, I bought the bottom. I, no, excuse me. Excuse that language. I do not want to use that. I bought this dip. Because I seen it at support here. This is a phenomenal support. It's a proven support. So I did buy this. I kind of went heavy. I kind of went heavy. And now what I'm looking for is 85.93 to break. I'm not worried about the gap. Uh, I, mean, I, I know some people might be. I personally am not worried about the gap at all. Okay, so the gap is at 86.78. I'm personally not worried about that. That might be like an intraday res, like a middle of the day, like a local res. But I, if we break 85.93, I'm ready for 90.53. I'm ready for 90.53. That's just me personally, right? That's just me personally. Now, if we come back and break 82.92, I'm getting out of this position, and I'm going to let it play itself out at that point because – that's going to get me kind of like, damn, we lost momentum to that extent. Where'd the volume go, right? Because this average is $47 million in volume. So that's super important to realize. So if, if the volume dies out and we fall back into here around like 79, I'm going to wait it out on the call side of stuff. I mean, maybe you could go um, shares in. But I, I, I still am going to have patience with that. I'm going to have patience with that. Uh, DraftKings, I mean, I, I, I want to see this round off. I want to see this round off. So far, the 4825s did hold as support, like we mentioned. But I want to see it round off. Because what could happen is, I've said this to you guys several times for different charts. On a swing high, then you go sideways, 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 swing high, right? Okay, so the same thing could happen on a swing low. So you have swing low, we could go sideways, 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 swing low. And then if we do get that swing low, then I believe we go to 45.18. Uh, do I think we go to 45.18? <sighs> I'm having difficulty with it. But the NBA is over now, so there's no more gambling there. Now you have all you have left is football, I believe, and, and maybe a few other sports. But football is like your number one, right? So... But you're having a lot of teams cancel games due to the virus, right? Players are getting the virus. That plays a role in how much money can possibly be generated. It could also just be people being oversensitive because this run already happened. Any little piece of news is an instant sell-off. That's possible too. That is super possible too, right? Uh, we had a request actually. Let me uh, see. Where is this request? Let's see. Uh, something about gold. Uh, Cade. I hope I pronounced your name right. Uh, any thoughts on gold? Let's check it out, right? Let's go check out gold. Well, before I do that, let's go check out the one, the only, the Dixie. Cool? Let's check this. Okay, so we're seeing a little bit of a recovery right here. Personally, dead cat bounce. Personally. Personally. Uh, a bearish market, right, and specifically talking about the dollar right now, but bearish market in general, if there's any bearish market, a bearish market is very, very mean. It's very, very uh, hurtful. What I mean by that is there's so many fake rallies. There's so many fake bounces. You've seen this very similar play right here, right, right here. So it's possible that this is exactly that. And then we go sideways, sideways, leg down, leg down. So that's definitely possible. You know my my goal now for the dollar is for a leg down to 91.20. Okay, I'm, I'm not telling you when it happens. 
I'm not telling you how soon it happens. I mean, it looks potentially like it happens by December. You know, in that range, it probably looks like, yeah, around December that that would occur. But that's what I'm looking for. I, I don't I don't see this going up. Uh, if it, I'm a new, I'm giving you a neutral pos, uh, opinion. So if it does look like it's starting to curl up, by all means, I will have a video. And if price action says it's curling up, and it looks like we could now go for a higher high, in in this range that we're in, then sure, no problem. I will tell you that. There's no problem with that. I'm just giving you levels. I'm telling you where we are and what the potential is, and what. Which way it looks like we're going, the directional trade. For me, the directional trade is showing that we're probably going to go around 91.20. That's the directional trade for me. That's what I believe. So now let's get into gold. Okay. Now, you're in a flag, right? You're in a flag. You bounced off right here, which was a, this is a solid. This is a very bullish bounce right here because this is the beginning of this this uh, sling high, this uptrend, right? What you want to see is say, <laughs> tomorrow this fucker better go up, right? If it doesn't go up, then we're, we're going to test that 173.02, and this is where we're going to be looking at that point. This is where we're going to be looking at that point. 170.82 between 168.67, right? You don't want this going any lower. You don't want this going any lower. And, and it's super important that it doesn't go any lower. You you want to see this now come test one eighty two seventy five. That's what you're kind of looking for this to go test. You want it to go test this range, and you you kind of want it to probably trade sideways between one eighty two seventy five and one eighty five twenty one. You don't want this going lower. Uh, if it does go lower, you could you could if it's your long term, sure you could buy the dip. You could buy the dip in this range down here. But I'm just letting you know this range down here, if this breaks, you know you're coming down to 166.05, right? You're coming down to 166.05 to 164.14. That would probably be where that goes. That's not the prettiest thing in the world. That's not the prettiest thing in the world. Speaking of, let's go to my baby, silver. Now, silver looks a little different, right, than how gold does. Maybe because we already did that swing low that, that gold is looking to do. It's possible. Silver might be a step ahead of what gold is about to do. Um, so we're testing again the 2254 that we broke, and that was res. This is fine with me. If anything, this was, a to me personally, a buy, right? 2254, that's a buy for me. Because I, I still, like I said, I believe we're going to continue the swing high to 2484 to 2540. That's where I believe we go. All right? So th that's what I look at for silver. Let's get into Bitcoin. You already know. Big bucks were printed on Bitcoin, right? Big bucks. Uh, we discussed that 11th uh, Sunday, right? Here. This is where we were Sunday. Let me move this over. Oh, actually. Yeah, this. <laughs> let's uh, go right here. That's exactly where we were. So we broke 11,000. I told you I think uh, we're going to blast through 11,000. We did. And I told you that there's probably going to be some local res between 11.4 and 11.279. There was. We popped right above that. Uh, this right here just looks like profit taking to me because y you're coming into a strong old, old res uh, between this zone over here between 11.8 and 11.7. Uh, I, I think right here you might go sideways for maybe a day, maybe two days. Uh, after that, I personally think a swing high, and you might you might just blast right through 11.8. You might. Or we can range here. We can range here. If you range here, that's really good, too. Because that means you're going to have a lot of steam to go test the 13.14 zone, right? Then you're going to have a lot of steam to go test that range. So that's fine also. We could, we could go with that as well. That's definitely in play. Litecoin, let's get to it. Sitting on support, looking pretty good. Told you we'd blast through here. Uh, we topped out at the same zone, but now I think you're gonna make a base right here above the old the old mark right here, right? Which is this is bullish. If that happens, and then let's go test the 56s to 57s, 
And then we go test the 56s to 57s. Um, Link, let's get it, baby. Another one. They're all they're all conducting themselves very cleanly, very cleanly. And look, man, you've seen me draw all these lines uh, with you, right? You've seen all this. Uh, so we came back. First off, we broke the nines. We came and we tested the upper range. I told you we're probably going to go test 12. The high was, what's that high? Let's see. High was around 11.80. We were pretty close. It was 20 cents, 30 cents off. That's cool. I tell you all the time, don't be a perfectionist. Just accept it. Go with the trends, right? So now we're bouncing off support again of the 10.50s. Uh, I'm looking for this. I'm looking for this to either come sideways here for a little bit or maybe come test a little lower over here. And then come right into the 12 range. But if we consolidate for a decent amount of time in this range, we might blast through the 12s, right? We might blast through the 12s and go right to the 15s and 14s. Holy shit, if that fucking happens, I'm in the money. That'd be dope, bro. That'd be super cool. All right, another one I mentioned was Adam. Adam did solid. I, 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 I mentioned it. I said, you know, we're breaking this little mark over here. It's looking like a swing high to fill in this swing low. We pretty much did. We got like 80% of that swing low filled in. Uh, if we consolidate here in this range, I think we probably break through uh, the sixes and go directly to 720, right? So a lot of stuff is looking really, really bullish when it comes to crypto. A lot of stuff. Let's check out Algo also because this, this is a big discussion for me. Um, 34 cents is like needs to get broken and needs to hold support there. It needs to hold support here. If it finally holds support here, we could test 38. And if you test 38 with some strength, shit, we go going to 50. That would be that, right? So everything's patience. Everything is price action. Yeah, I got some indicators on the bottom, but it don't mean shit. The only thing that really matters is price action. Price action, price action, price action. You know, you put trailing stops. You take profit when you're supposed to. You get into playing trades. You know what I'm saying? You don't get greedy. You cut losses quick. You don't just sit there and go, all right, but it might go back. All right, let me, let me just wait another 15-minute candle. All right, let me wait a 30-minute candle. All right, let me wait an hour candle. You know what? Let, let's see how the four-hour closes. Uh, you know what? We're going to wait to see how the day closes. Let's wait for the weekly, and then you're down 80%. You don't want to do that, man. You want to get your risk to reward right. You want to get your risk to reward right and play it the way you thought it would play. And if it looks like it went against you, then get out. This is why your opinion needs to stay neutral, right? You got to just look at a chart and just, just – do the math. Just trade the math. Trade the plan with a neutral heart. And if it goes the other way, you shouldn't be upset. You should say, okay, let's let's close out. Let's see how this plays out. And, and let's see. We're, we're going to watch it for a little. And then we're going to hop in if it shows us that we could hop in. If it shows us we can't hop in, then we don't hop in. We just move on to something else. Like I said, man, I made money on, on, on Etsy, right? I made money on Square. These things ran. Okay, I closed at like $150. It's at $153. Should I be upset? No, I'm not upset. Why would I be upset? I made the pro planned profit that I planned on making, and now my plan now is to let this cool off, and I'm just going to go pull up another chart. You know what? I, that's all, man. That's all. Don't get sucked in and stuck on one chart, and don't watch every five-minute candle. It's not. It doesn't do anything for you. It doesn't do anything for you. That's why, if you notice, mine are 998-minute candles. 998-minute candles. That is, in trading hours, a whole day. And in crypto, it's about, I think, like 12 hours or something like that? 11 and a half? Some shit like that. <coughs> Excuse me. So, that's really it. You know, keep it simple. Don't start putting a thousand things all over your chart thinking you're fucking Einstein. You're not Einstein. Stop it. Enough. Trading can be super, super simple. You just got to take away the emotion. That's the that's the hardest part about trading. Once the emotion is removed and you just have technicals involved and fundamentals, 
Trading is easy. Trading is easy. Now, don't get me wrong. I am a human, okay? My emotions do get involved sometimes. Of course they do. But I've learned to curb them way more than a lot of other people can curb them, right? I'm emotionally numb when it comes to trading. Sometimes can I get upset? Of course. But I'm not hanging onto my chair watching Minute Candles, all right? This is smart. I appreciate everybody that's here. I appreciate everybody that's subscribed. I appreciate everybody that's liked something. I appreciated everybody that's ever commented something, shared this with somebody. Anything that's got to do with this page, I'm grateful for. I thank you guys. Now, like I say all the time, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. If you have a chart that you want me to chart, any ticker it is, leave it in the comments. Rules are, though, all we ask is large cap, mid cap, no penny stocks, and we don't tell you when to buy or sell. We just give you the levels. That's strictly, strictly important, all right? Um, this is Smart with Smart Money. Thank you, everybody, and have a beautiful... Wow, that was weird. Have a beautiful night, and that's that. Later, guys.